1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. One, two, thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. I want to give our praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakah, Kodash, forgive me the spirit to do this lesson. This lesson is going to fight in the good fight of faith. Okay? And that's what this truth is about, man. It's about fighting. All right? It's not about you being perfect in the flesh because you're not going to be. All right? Until this flesh is removed. You know, you cannot obtain perfection within this flesh. All right? We only can obtain perfection through the belief and faith in Yahweh Shai and striving. Okay? So read this again. 1 Timothy 6, verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Right? Lay hold on Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right? His blood. One, two, thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. And we have. Those who've been experiencing this truth for years, man, and taught this word before many witnesses, man. That's why the world is getting pissed off. That's why Jake is waking up across the globe. Okay, because you have Hebrew Israelite believers, true believers, that have professed a good profession, this gospel, before many witnesses. All right? Now, those same men go through pure hell. Those same men, all right, go through the flesh, troubles in the flesh. We all do. Okay? But you can't let that overwhelm you to the point where you stop fighting. I don't care what you're going through, man. It does not matter. All right? It does not matter what you're going through. That's why Yahweh Shai was sacrificed. That's why his sacrifice is so major, so huge for us. Because we do some shit, man, that we like, whoa, man. The Lord could kill us, man. Certain things we do and certain things we think about, man. The Lord could drop us, man, tonight. Think about that, man, in the spirit. You could be dropped right now for shit you have done last week, hell, today maybe. You know? But a righteous man fall down seven times and get back up again. It's about getting back up and fighting a good fight of faith. You got to believe through all this bullshit. You have to believe through all your shortcomings in the flesh, the wicked shit you do, the wicked shit you think about. You got to believe through that because why? It's about faith. It's not about the law necessarily, even though you don't make the law void. All right. From there, let's go to Ephesians chapter six, start at verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, right? In the power of his might, put on the whole armor of Yahweh Shai that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, right? The whole armor is that faith, okay? This truth, that faith, that's the whole armor, all right? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, right, man? And that's an everyday battle, man. You don't win all the time, all right? You don't win all the time. You go through very low uh, spiritual lows in this truth that you got to climb out of, man, that quicksand, man. All right? But you know what's going to get you out of that quicksand? Your faith. Okay? To keep believing. Okay? To move on. Confess your faults to your Habashim Shai and move on. It says he is faithful to forgive you. But you got to believe that, man. You have to really believe this word, man. This word is powerful, man. Okay? And in our wickedest moments, the things we do that just ain't right, even though we know this truth. And we, you know, like Paul talked about, man, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak indeed, man. And we have all experienced it, man. We still experiencing it. And you're going to continue to experience it until what? Until you change. But you're not going to be changed if you lose faith. If you don't keep fighting and keep swinging, man. Okay. Your how about you, Shai is watching you. To see if you're going to keep fighting through all the wicked shit that you're going through. That you think about. You know. You know you don't like it. You know. It may feel good. Whatever you're doing it ain't right. But you know it ain't right. And you know it in your heart. Okay. And you're fighting to do better. To do better and more better and more better man. It's about striving. Verse 13. Wherefore take unto you the whole arm of your high shy, That you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth 
and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, fight the good fight of faith, like I read in the first Timothy six verse twelve. Okay, above all, taking the shield of faith, with you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Right, man. Faith and charity, because charity covers a multitude of sins. Lord willing, I can do that lesson next. Focus on charity, man, because that's very, very important. All right. Verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of your high Shai. Praying always. Got to do more prayer. All right. Praying always with all prayer and supplication of the spirit. Now, at your lowest moments, you're supposed to be praying hard. But even in your highest moments, you pray hard. Okay? Your prayers do not need to lapse because you're doing good or you're doing worse. Okay? You need to be fervent with your prayer, period, all around. And we all got to get better at that, including myself. Okay? So let's read that again. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. Right, man. It's about the body, man. It's about the church. It's about the hopeful elect. Being charitable, praying for the hopeful elect. Okay? Being there for the hopeful elect. All right? That's what it's about. From there, let's go to Sirach chapter 2. Let's start at verse 13. Woe unto him that is faint-hearted, for he believeth not. Right? Don't be faint-hearted, man, because the things you're going through, man, because the Lord is chastising you and put things in your life. And instead of you just learning from it and moving forward with more faith, okay, and praying to the Lord, you get faint-hearted and you give up. No faith, man. Okay, that's not fighting the good fight of faith. All right? It says, for he believeth not, therefore shall he not be defended. Right, man. So don't get faint-hearted because when you get faint-hearted, that means you don't believe, especially if you stay that way. You don't repent in your mind and your spirit. So your how about Shema Washai ain't going to defend you, man. Okay, because you couldn't take the heat. You got to be able to take the heat, man. Verse 14, woe unto you to have lost patience. Ooh, and what will you do when the Lord shall visit you? Right. And when you faint hearted, it makes you lose patience. It's hard to uh, stay patient with a faint heart, man. Okay, you get wrapped up in that. You fail, but you want to stay down. Hell no, man. I don't care what you fall at, man. Get your ass back up, man. Get your ass back up. We got a kingdom that's at hand here. Okay? No matter how long you think it's taking, we at the end. That's for sure. We know we at the end. And for you know your how is shot going to crack them skies. And how you going to feel if you lost your patience and all of a sudden, nope, your how is here. You're going to look crazy as hell, man. That's the reality. You're going to lose your damn mind. All right? They that fear the Lord would not disobey his word, and they that love him would keep his ways. Mm. Meaning keep the faith. That's what it's talking about. It ain't talking about the law. It's talking about keep the faith in your high about shy. Because we're not justified by the law. I always got to point that out so you can understand. They that fear the Lord will seek that which is well pleasing unto him. And they that love him shall be filled with the law. They that fear the Lord will prepare their hearts and humble their souls in his sight. Right. Got to be humble. Saying we will fall into the hands of the Lord and not into the hands of man. For as his majesty is, so is his mercy. Right, so remember that, man. Okay, we fight, man. His mercy is high. His mercy is great for those who fight. Okay? That mercy is to those those Hebrew Israelites that's really fight, man. That's battling their mind, man. Okay? That when they do wrong, man, they're sorrowful, man. They don't like it. Versus the world, the people in the world, man, they do wrong. They don't give a shit. They just keep going. They ain't thinking about what the fuck they doing. Why? Because they're so much involved in lust, 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 lust. It don't bother them, man, because they're worldly. But us as spiritual, man, it, you know, it bothers us when we do wrong. You know, we actually sit down and think about it. All right, let's go to Mark chapter 4, start at verse 16. And this is about the sower of the parable. So I'm going to start at verse 16. It says, and these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. Okay, heard this word, you a Hebrew Israelite, you was excited, you immediately received it and have no root in themselves and so endure but for a time. Now, you don't want to be this guy. 
afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word. And the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things enter in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. Right, man. That would make you faint-hearted, man. Being carried away with all kinds of lust. That would take the word out of you. That would zap the word out of you to the point where you have no spirit to fight. Okay? You have no spirit to fight because the word that was once in you is getting choked out. And you're going lower and lower and lower. You have no strength. Okay? But you got to fight that. That's part of this fight, man. Fighting off desires, man, of this world. Things you want to do. You know, maybe certain things you want to do before you came to this truth. And it's creeping back in. And you want to do it, but... You know it's going to take a lot of your time, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, all kinds of things. Okay? You got to fight the good fight of faith, man. Okay? At times, you're going to feel choked. And it's true because certain things is going to be an example of what not to do. The Lord going to show you. Okay, go ahead. Watch this. You're going to feel like shit. You're going to get low. You're going to have to climb out of that lowness. Meaning what? You're going to have to get back up again. You're going to have to fight the good fight of faith. Okay? Long as you believe, long as you breathe, man, you have an opportunity to fight day in and day out because you ain't promised tomorrow. So with that, I hope you were edified. I want to give all praise to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Rukav Kadash, to give me the spirit to do this lesson. Double honor to the elders of Great Millstone. And Shalom to Yahweh after this doing the truth and sincerity. Shalom.